It's just starting. Because what I view is they needed to ultimately show that margin story, that it was going to rebound. And we saw just massive margin rebound in terms of for Tesla. And it's all about deliveries into next year. 20 to 30% growth, much higher than anyone expected, even the bulls like us. I think it's get the popcorn out. This is just the stage to this company being over a trillion dollar market. Tesla continues to really be the most undervalued AI play in the market. It, I mean, we're talking Mahomes compared to other quarterbacks, right? I mean, th this is just a separation from a scale and scope. They're going to have 2 million deliveries next year. I mean, a lot of these other, you're talking about 100, 200 K. What Tesla's able to do right now, now it's expanding that product line. You'll see Semi, you'll see Roadster, of course, Cybertruck's out there. Sub $30,000 vehicle, we think, going into next year. That's ultimately going to be the key as this all ultimately plays out. And look, you go into this, me and you have talked about this the last few weeks. New York City cab drivers bearishing Tesla into this quarter. They showed the margins, they showed the delivery, and I do believe the robo-taxi takeaways was the wrong one that the bears came away with. This will be an autonomous and AI story over the coming years. So Kathy and Ark, I mean, one of the biggest supporters of Tesla, right? So I mean, they'll, for, for the long term, I mean, if you look at their model on robo-taxis and where this is all heading, it just speaks to our broader point this is the most undervalued AI play in the market. And I think what we saw with this quarter was a huge step in the right direction because of margins. Because we could talk about AI autonomous all day long, comes down to margins. You couldn't see those team margins. So the 200 bit improvement now going to 20% next year. But look, 20 to 30% delivery growth. If they even hit the bottom end of that range, then th this is a stock with a three in front of it. When it comes to Tesla's impressive growth, it's not just about observing from the sidelines. For Tesla bulls and those with a keen eye for uncovering the next stock market gem, Seeking Alpha is your one-stop shop, offering the latest on Tesla, Tesla stock price targets, Tesla innovation, and everything Elon Musk. Clicking on the affiliate links in the description and making a purchase may earn our channel a commission. It, to me, trying to look at six months, if it's first half 26, second half 26, I think it's split in hairs in terms of where this is all going. Because the autonomous and AI story, I believe the AI story is worth a trillion dollars alone to, to Tesla. So if it moves out six months, it doesn't necessarily move the needle for us. In the near term, it's really about coming out with a sub 30K vehicle. I think that's first half of next year, margins rebounding, delivery growth rebound, especially in China. And then you start to look at all the growth levers that could happen here. That's why the, you know, if you look at the last 24 hours, the bears, they're going back into this hibernation mode. Look, it's a tightrope. I mean, clearly, you know, it's been a controversial issue, but I think in terms of US, despite all the noise, it's been limited from a demand perspective in terms of the impact. Now, I'm not saying going forward, th there can be some, you know, a little nervousness on that, but the reality is, if you produce the best vehicles in the world for EVs, consumers yeah. will buy them. And I think we saw that yeah, with Cybertruck, so right? 300 and then bull, and then bull case 350. This continues to be a consumer AI play. Sorry. Get the popcorn out. Big tech's gonna be strong next week. I think China is really what's going to be driving that. I mean, look, street was it called 10, 11% whisper numbers. So this was much better than anyone thought. That optimism is very important combined with that margin spike. I mean, this is really an Aaron Judge like quarter when you put together the, the margins as well as that delivery outlook, bulls are going to be happy. I think it's really market share gains. I mean, what, what you're really starting to see is the price cuts have actually subsided. You're starting to see market share gains in China. They just had their best month of China in terms of September ever. That's 40, 45 percent of deliveries. And then you combine that with some signs of strength that I believe will improve in the U.S. as well as Europe. And then the big thing is next year you're going to have a sub $30,000 vehicle. And I think they, they doubled down on that. And as much as we could talk about autonomous and AI, that is the vision, that is the future. Deliveries, margins, that's the focus. And this is really something where I think the inflection point
in the Tesla story began last night. I think it sharpens the knives between the bulls and the bears because the bears will argue gross margins missed, price cuts continue to happen, and lower ASPs. But, but in my opinion, this story is about AI, robotaxi, robotics. And really, actually, a price stabilization that's happening. And I think demand that ultimately is starting to turn the corner in China. So for me, I'm actually more bullish today on the Tesla autonomous robotaxi story than 24 hours ago because you got the date. I think outline maybe what I believe is gonna be sort of the, the prototype and actually pretty bullish on where they expect to actually start to see a den. He said later this year, I think potentially into next year. So you go back three months ago, you know, obviously stocks 140, the bears thing is going sub 100. Look where it is today. So the point is the reason we are where we are today is investors are now starting to recognize the AI story. I think Tesla is the most undervalued AI play out there. We think AI alone could be worth a trillion dollars to the name as also this name is stabilizing from a demand and pricing perspective. We've said it, we've talked about it publicly, this is a no brainer because to me, it's all about Tesla further and further doubling down on the AI story. And I think that's what investors want to see. I have never from the beginning viewed Tesla as an auto company. I view a disruptive technology name, but that's why look, the bears are going to come out today. They definitely on the, on the margin miss. That's why the stock's down. But I believe we sit here weeks, months from now, and investors now start to focus more and more on 1010. Yeah, I think margins, margins, margins. I mean, that, that's that been a huge part of the overhang on this story. They beat by 200 bips, price cuts in the rear view mirror. And when you combine that with that growth forecast, I mean, I did whisper numbers are called 10, 11%. They gave 20 to 30%. It's an Aaron Judge like quarter. Yeah, I think you'll have a sub 30K vehicle by first half of next year. And I think that all dovetails into their overall growth forecast, 20 to 30% coming out of the gates for 2025. And now we look at their, their cost of goods. Their ability to produce cars is down ultimately 30, 40%. and could be down another 20, 30% when you look at the next year. It has been a painful year, no doubt, in terms of EVs and softer demand, what we've seen on margins. The renaissance of growth now is, I think, heading into 2025. And then you have AI autonomous, and I think a lot of the other growth drivers that to me, it's key to what I see as a trillion dollar plus mark cap. Oh yeah, now look, the bears that have been bearish since, you know, 100 million mark cap, they'll, I mean, those bears will come out of hibernation mode today. But the reality is, is that they're going to produce over 2 million vehicles next year. And when you think about the overall growth story, more penetration on the FSD. Talk, I gave, I think, ultimately more details last night in terms of autonomous, FSD, cyber cab. A lot of those details, maybe some left RoboTaxi Day disappointed. I was not. And look, now it's just execution. But, but to poke holes in this story, I believe the most undervalued AI play in the market. I mean, I think like me and you, I mean, we could be in a cyber cab in the next two to three years. So, so we're not talking about something that's five, 10 years down the road. This is something that will over the coming years become a reality. And, and, and I don't necessarily view this as a negative for Uber. I mean, Lyft obviously has their own issues, but when you look at Tesla, this is going to be the next stage of growth. Autonomous, FSD, AI. But it comes down to you need the deliveries, you need the margins. They're checking every box. I actually thought that was probably the best conference call I've heard from Musk and Tesla in, in a number of years. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that it hinges on the Trump victory. I think Trump or Harris, I don't think the growth story vastly changes. I do believe if Trump gets elected second term, it's bearish for EVs because overall the tax credit would essentially go away. But I do believe that it's bullish for Tesla because that ultimately would give them more scale and scope versus other, you know, other players and potentially could fast track FSD and some of the other technologies that ultimately we see under a Trump administration. I do think Tesla is part of that, I'll call it Trump trade. But do you know who else shares in pro Tesla optimism? 
that would be today's sponsor, Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha is the best pro Tesla news source on the internet. Click the affiliate link in the description below to get the latest Tesla offering, price targets, innovation, and everything Elon Musk. Link in the description for a very special offer. I mean, the whole story is about gross margins. I mean, that's really been the headwind on Tesla stock. I'd say 30 to 48 hours of a headwind to the stock. You saw gross margins. I mean, this is a blowout. Not even us thought that we could see a gross margin where essentially is anywhere from a two to 300 bit beat. This shows price cuts now under control. Margins start to tick back up. You start to get now toward 20% gross margins. I think this is the start of the stock ultimately. This will have a three in front of it as a stock as the gross margins start to trend up and as well as growth into next year from a delivery perspective. Look, I think longer term, I would think the, the longer term story here is autonomous, is robotics, is essentially the AI play. Street, what they need to see here, show me margins. You cannot have margins going toward 13, 14%. Now that margins are starting to level off, that is so important, not just from a cash flow perspective, but showing the worst is in the rearview mirror. And when you think about all the bears and all the negatives, it comes down to deliveries will start to uptick. China, I think, is a source of strength in the quarter. But that gross margin, it's a Goldilocks for any bear. Mm. Okay, it's a Goldilocks for any bull. The bears, it's kind of a nightmare for because that was ultimately the core of the story. The linchpin to the story from a growth is a sub 30K vehicle. And I believe that that hits by middle of 2025. That's the growth. I mean, that's ultimately, you're talking about like single digit growth this year. That's how you get to 10, 12, 15% type growth. Margins under control. That's what the bulls want to see. And I think the fact that they actually doubled down on, and I expect clearly on the conference call, they'll focus not just on margins, but more details around that vehicle. But RoboTaxi Day, we could argue, you know, many would say that they're disappointed. I believe ultimately that shows the vision, the autonomous and the AI vision. Street need to ultimately see. Stop talking the talk, walk the walk, show the margins. They did it. And Musk really has, I think, stepped up in that capacity. Yeah, I, th I think it's actually going to be heavy on details. I think importantly, this is really showing autonomous in terms of true autonomous as we go to level four, level five. This is really going to be a game changer for Tesla. And I think they're going to show on CyberCab and, and the roll up. I think by the end of next year, this is something within certain cities that will be, you know, ultimately a reality. And I think when you actually start to go through per mile and you look at miles driven, I think from a fleet perspective, even relative to what we see with Waymo and everyone else, this is, I think it's a new chapter for Tesla. You do not walk away, shrug the shoulders. I think this is a game changer. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's really, okay, what's the timetable? Now, clearly, obviously, you know, some of the promises in the past have, have not worked out here. I think we're talking not just the, by the end of next year, but what's the ramp over the next few years, three to four years? What could that mean in terms of for the fleet, six million cars out there, potentially eight or 10 over the next few years? What ultimately does that mean this is pure margins. This is really building out a whole new business for Tesla. And I think we could be looking at something based on our math three, four years out. This could be 20, 30 percent overall profits. I mean, there I just look at look at FSD, look at autonomous relative to cars on the road. This is not just for Tesla. It's RV that they're ultimately going to OEM this technology. And when, and, and when you look at even some of the numbers out there, I mean, we could be talking about 10, 20 billion annually per year that they're starting to, to ultimately deliver when this ultimately gets to scale. And I don't view this necessarily as a massive threat to Uber, but just look what Uber did in rideshare. So I think when we look at the broader market here and ultimately the software driven and the margins, I, I view this this will be a day we look back at three, four years from now that actually start to change the next phase of the Tesla story. Oh, clear. look, I think David's question on the cost per mile, that's something I'd expect to hear about. And that's important in terms of what we're, what we're looking at. Regulatory is the biggest hurdle. And I think that's something state by state on the federal side, they're clearly, they're gonna have work cut out for them. But that is something, I think it starts tonight but over the coming 12, 18, 24 months, 
I think regulatory ultimately is something that they're going to be able to sort of navigate through. And I think that's the important thing tonight, not just the technology showing how we get there, what the roadmap is. I mean, we were very impressed. I mean, I thought in 25 years of going to events like this, this was, I think, a jaw dropper event relative to the technology that's coming out. But in terms of cyber cab, autonomous, the future, what I believe and when I look at Optimus and in terms of where that's going to go, unsupervised FSD, Texas, California. I mean, Nicole, in my opinion, you walk away from there more bullish, not less bullish, but that now it's about execution. But I don't think there's anything that was disappointing coming out of that, what I view as just really a historical event that we'll view as historical three, four years from now. But I think as we've seen many times, investors in Tesla, they want more. And that, and but that's not necessarily their style. They are going to lack details. Then you'll get more, I think, on the earnings call and then more as we go into the next three to six months. But it's not a reason to sell the stock. I actually think the future of yeah. Tesla, I mean, look what Musk just did this weekend with SpaceX. I mean, the point is that it's all an iterative process. But when you look at Optimus, I believe in the next few years, I mean, you will start to see robots in-house. And that's something that's also going to be key in terms of factories and where this is all going. But it's gone away from beta toward what I view as more of not just the prototype, but really the, the multi-phased approach to getting this to become a reality.